Hello, welcome to this video on sampling and the wagon wheel effect. The wagon wheel effect is something which is commonly observed in videos that contain rotating objects such as the wheels of cars. If you recall, a video is just a sequence of photographs played back in succession quickly, thus giving you a feeling that there is actually continuous motion. So it's fast enough that your eye is fooled into thinking that it's continuous motion. If the speed of the car becomes very high, then sometimes you may notice that the wheel does not tend to move in a correct manner. Sometimes the wheel of the car tends to move backward when the car is moving forward and things like that start to happen. Why does this happen? So if you consider the movement of a car wheel, let us say there's a red dot. The red dot is actually going to be represented in the photos which we take. So when I say photos, I mean frames of the video. Let's say that this is one of the photos of the frames. In the next frame, it appears here. The next frame, it appears here and so on. Thus giving you a feeling that it is moving in the clockwise direction. This is fine, but if the movement becomes very quick, let us say that you take a photograph of the dot over here and let's say that the next photograph appears here. Still, you can make out that it is moving in a clockwise direction, but what if you take a photograph here and then it ends up moving, let's say, let's say it ends up moving three-fourths of the way and it ends up here. Then you will get the incorrect feeling that it is actually moving in an anti-clockwise direction. This is because the wheel is moving rather quickly and the successive frames are not able to capture the movement faithfully. Let's take an example of this. I have prepared an example for you. So if you look at this, the FPS is frames per second. That is the number of frames captured per second, while F wheel is the rate of rotations per second of the wheel. In the first example, the red dot is placed on the rim and the rate at which you are taking photos or frames is 10 times the rate of rotation of the wheel. In other words, by the time that this red dot completes one full rotation, 10 photos have been stored. You can see that this movement is captured quite well and you are able to see that the wheel is moving in the clockwise direction. Over here, this is a tricky case. What if the frame per second is exactly twice the rate of rotation of the wheel? What happens here is interesting. You see the red dot over here. The red dot has moved either clockwise or anti-clockwise, you don't know, but it has moved exactly halfway. Again, it moves halfway. So, the motion is not captured. You are just able to see that the red dot moves across a diameter of the wheel and we don't know whether it goes clockwise, anti-clockwise, at what rate. All these things are not clear. This happens because we are taking photos exactly at twice the rotation of the wheel. Because by the time it goes to the other side, before it reaches the other diameter, if we take a photo, we may be able to see the movement of the dot. But because it is exact, we lost the faithful reproduction of the movement. Finally, over here, a fr the frames per second is 1.25 times the rate of rotation of the wheel. In this case, a photograph is taken and then the we the red dot moves 80% of the way. Now why is it 80%? You can calculate that that's 1 upon 1.25. So if the red dot is over here and then it moves 80% to come before the next photo is taken and then it moves 80% again, which means that what you end up seeing is the red dot moving backward. It seems to move backward and the rotation is not faithfully captured. This 
is uh, an effect called the wagon wheel effect and in a more technical term this is called aliasing. Now what does this have to do with our continuous time signals? So if you have a continuous time signal you know from our Fourier transform literature that you know from Fourier transform literature that the Fourier transform of the signal captures the information about the continuous time signal. If W is the maximum frequency present in the signal, let's say that this is the Fourier transform, then you can consider the signal to be a combination of several frequencies and these frequencies are representative of a wagon wheel. Now why is that the case? If you look closely, this wagon wheel is actually like a complex exponential. Why? Because this point is actually r e power j omega t. How? It's basically r cos omega t comma r sin omega t. So the rate of rotation of the wheel omega is directly connected to the sampling because if you are sampling rate that is let's say omega which is 2 pi f okay so this sam this is the rate of rotation of the wheel and you know from our previous example that your fs has to be greater than 2 times f then you can accurately capture the signal over here we see that all these frequencies can be thought of as different rotating wheels superposed with each other to produce a signal so to be able to represent this signal faithfully the sampling rate should be at greater than two times the highest frequency present which is why fs should be greater than 2w we will study the impact of this in a more technical term with the impulse strain in the next video